All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that exciting tale of whaling days. In our last adventure, we found our friends in all kinds of trouble on the strange island off the coast of Brazil, where the good ship Paul Parrot has been wrecked by a great storm. Misto, the fugitive magician and his black leopard, controls a tribe of Indians on the island, and he's taken Captain Dalton prisoner. When Captain Karsh, the privateer captain, who was also cast away on the island with the Paul Parrot, goes with his first mate, Briny, to make a bargain with Misto, a quarrel results in which Misto and Briny join forces. But Karsh is trussed up as a prisoner and thrown in the same hut with Captain Dalton. Meanwhile, Johnny and Sue, along with old Dickon and Paul Parrot himself, have gone out on their own to search for Captain Dalton, unknown to Mr. Grange, the ship's owner, Annabelle Wilson, and the rest of the Paul Parrot's crew back on the beach. Johnny and Sue discover the Indian's village and finally find the hut where Karsh and Captain Dalton are imprisoned. But as they're debating whether Captain Dalton is really held in the hut as well as Karsh, whose face they can see through the window, Dickon suddenly shouts a warning to them, and turning, they see the black leopard slinking up on them. As our story continues, they stand frozen in their tracks, almost afraid to move. Don't move, Sue. If you don't run, he may not attack us. Oh, Johnny, what'll we do? Stay where you are, you young'uns. I'll attract his attention over here, I will. And maybe I'll let you be. I'm loose. I'm loose. I've got the ropes off. There ain't nothing on sea no land can hold me in this black hole. Listen, it's Karsh inside the hut. Oh, oh, he's gotten free. He's coming out of the hut. And the leopard hears him. It's turning toward the hut. Yeah. And now, Dalton, you can stay in there and rot for all I care. If you'd have talked to me and thrown in with me, I'd have freed you. But now you can see. Avast. What are you two doing here? And... Uh, oh! Uh, that blooming black leopard! Stay away from me! Keep away! He's after me! Keep away, blast you! I ain't harming you! Oh, Johnny! The leopard's gonna get Captain Karsh! Oh, it's horrible! We can't do a thing. You know that leopard hates Karsh anyway. Don't run, Mr. Karsh. It'll only make the leopard spring on you. Yeah, you brought him here, you two. You wanted this blooming beast to get me. Well, he has to catch me first. Oh, he's turning and running into the jungle. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, it must have caught him. Gee, that's awful. But, Sue, at least we're safe for a minute. Here comes Dickon. Blow me down. And I seen it all. It looks like the leopard got the blooming pirate in the jungle. Rock, he got the blooming pirate. Rock. No, Rock. no, you two youngins are blinking lucky it turned out this way, huh? But Dickon, the black leopard may come back. Let's go in the hut. The way Karsh talked when he came out, Captain Dalton must be tied up in there, too. Batten down the edge. You're right, lad. Rock, save the captain. Save the captain. Rock. Look. Back there in the shadow. Captain Dalton, it's us, Johnny and Sue. And I'm with him, Captain. Are you all right? Johnny and Sue and Dick and... Blow me down, how did you get here? We've been hanging around the Indians' camp trying to find where you were held captive. And finally, we heard Karsh yelling and we got here just as he broke loose. Hey, the privateer swab's been begging me to talk to him. But I'll have no trade with the likes of him. I wouldn't answer. And it fair drove him crazy. Well, sir, we'll hear no more from him, we won't. Johnny... Let me help you untie those ropes from around Captain Dalton. Oh, bless you, Sue. And you, Johnny. It seems whenever I'm in deepest danger, you come sweeping in on the wind to help me. I don't know what I'd do without the three of you. But, Dickon, what did you mean just now when you said we'll hear no more from Karsh? Well, sir, that blooming black leopard that belongs to the white man who leads these savages Aye. came up just as the young'uns here were looking in the earth. And when Karsh came out, it trailed him into the jungle. And, well, sir... From the yelling we all heard, yeah, there's been an end to Bruno Karsh, and you may lay to that, sir. What, the leopard attacked Karsh? It sounded like it, Captain, just inside the jungle. Avast. I don't care if the man's my sworn enemy. I can't see a human being die a death like that. My limbs are free. It may not be too late to help. I'm going to look for Karsh. But, Captain, it's good riddance, it is. Dick and I can't see any man, no matter how much a blackguard he is, suffer such a fate. Follow me. Avast, Captain. You've got too big a heart. You can't keep out of trouble because of it. Dickon, let's look here in the underbrush. Maybe we can find Karsh's trail. Look, Captain Dalton. Huh? The underbrush is all flattened out around here. It looks like a struggle went on here. Batten down the edge. I'm afraid that kind of a struggle could have only one kind of an ending. And here, the bushes are crushed down all along as if... 
as if something heavy had been dragged into the jungle. Oh, Johnny. Johnny, that means... I'm afraid, lass. It means it's too late to do anything about it. We might as well head back for our camp on the beach while the Indian village is still deserted, as it seems now. I'm still thinking, Captain. It may be all for the best. We ought to be getting back to camp, all right. You know, Sue, we didn't tell Mr. Grange where we were going, and I'll bet he's worried about us. That's right, Johnny. Ezra probably has some of the men searching for us now. We'd better hurry and let him know that Captain Dalton is safe. It's just one problem after another. It wasn't bad enough to have Karsh and his band of cutthroats on this same island with us. Then we find hostile Indians all around us. Captain Dalton disappears, obviously captured by these Indians. And now there's no trace of Sue or Johnny. I'm worried. I can't help feeling that the children are all right, Mr. Grange. You said before that old Dickon was gone, too. He's most likely with them in the woods. I'd say jungle rather than woods, Miss Wilson. And surrounded by enemies as we are, it's hardly a safe place to go. Besides, we have no idea what's happened to Captain Dalton. Mr. Grange, even though I've only been with your party for a short time, I have never seen a man in whom I could put as much confidence as Captain Dalton. Somehow I feel that wherever he is, he'll be safe. I'm inclined to share your confidence, Miss Wilson. I know of no man I'd rather have on my side in an emergency. By George, it's getting late. The sun's almost down. And still no sign of Sewer Johnny. I'm going out and have a look around. I believe I'll join you. But, Mr. Grange, the camp looked empty. Where are all the men? Well, most of them are still out searching for Captain Dalton, you know. And I sent Mr. Jowett out with some of the men when Sue and Johnny disappeared. Mr. Nicholson and one or two of the others are still over at the Paul Parrot, trying to patch up a few of the smaller damages. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. It's so peaceful here. The sun is sinking behind the island, and all the sea is red. All the trees of the forest are in purple shadows. I'm not so sure that it's such a beautiful scene. Heaven knows what threatening thing lurks in those purple shadows in the woods. Perhaps right now we're being watched by some band of rogues who wish to do us harm. So that's the camp, eh, Briny? Aye, Mr. Matey. That's the camp of the Blinkin' Paul Parrot crew. It certainly looks as though we'd picked a good time. There's not a man stirring. Blimey, scotch me riggin' if I don't think they're all out outin' for that bloomin' Captain Dalton you've got stowed in your hut back at camp. Perhaps. You think you can find the diamonds in the ship over there on the beach if my Indians take care of everybody at the camp? Blimey, mate, I can find a bloomin' minnow in the Pacific if you tell me which one you want. Give me ten minutes. Don't worry, my friend. No matter how large a force is here... My Indians can keep them quite busy for considerably more than ten minutes. I still think, Mr. Old Noggin, it would have been a blinking good idea to call some of my men from Karsh's camp to help us on this job. Now, look, Briny, my boy. You admitted that it was wiser to put your not-too-beloved Captain Karsh away. It means more for both of us. Aye, but his men would have stuck by me. I remind you again. It's better to let no one in this little game who doesn't have to be. My Indians will be quite enough, I assure you. Hold on. There are two people walking along the beach. Oh, them. That's only Ezra Grange, the bloomin' landlubber who owns the Paul Parrot. You didn't be frightened of the likes of him. Uh, but the other. It's a woman. She's bad luck, she is. If it hadn't been for her, we wouldn't have been shipwrecked, I says. Women aboard ship is bad luck, so help me. But who is she? Annabelle Wilson, she is. Our Captain Kosh's promised bride. She was sailing with us to South Africa to be married to Karsh, and she come aboard with him on the Paul Parrot just before that storm that wrecked us. When she found Karsh was a privateer, she left him and joined up with this blooming crowd of whalers. She's been staying with the little sister of that swab Grange over there. Ah, we search for diamonds, and I find a pearl of great price. Hold on now, mighty. I tell you, women is bad luck. You raid the camp for provisions, and I'll get the diamonds. But the woman's a Jonah. Silence. You shall have your share of the diamonds. That's our agreement. But I shall manage my own affairs. I'll be off for the ship. I'll give my Indians the signal to attack the camp. Blimey, if you won't listen to me, you won't. But you'll regret it. You'll regret it. Ah, now is the time to strike. Uwa! Olagu! Uga! Uga! Pugalabu! Oh, no. Oh, no. Mr. Grange, stop! Good heavens, it's those savages sweeping down on us from the jungle. And the minute the ship are outnumbered, run, Miss Wilson, run for the cabin. Help! Help! Somebody's caught me! 
My Caesar, it's a white man. Let go of this lady, sir. You tell me the great Miss Go to let go. <laughs> oh, look oh, me, you dirty savages. Try to run away, Miss Wilson. The Indians have me. I shall... Oh, you'll pay for this. You... Who are you? What are you going to do with me? You are coming back with me, the great Misto, to my castle in the jungle. Not very much of a castle, I'll admit, but you'll grow to like it. No, no, I won't go with you. I won't. Ah, high spirits, eh? But go with me, you shall. What Misto wants, he takes. If only there had been more of the crew of the Paul Parrot on the beach, this might not have happened. What have the Indians done to Ezra Grange? And what's going to happen to Annabelle? Will Misto, the magician, really kidnap her? Will Johnny and Sue with Captain Dalton and Dickon return safely? What about Karsh and the Black Leopard? Be sure to listen to the next transcribed adventure in the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Until then, this is your Paul Parrot announcer, Dave Ward, saying goodbye. Goodbye.